This incredible staff right now uh, here at Hyatt is getting ready to start serving lunch, but we also have a special session for No Labels, from No Labels, a national movement of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, boy, do they need, all need to work together, working to bring our leaders together to solve America's toughest problems. We've honored that two of these leaders, Democratic Congressman Josh Gottenheimer and Republican Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, are joining Ryan Clancy to talk about how to get our government working together again. I'm Ryan Clancy, lead strategist for No Labels. I'm lucky to have with me uh, Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick who uh, represents Pennsylvania's first district, he's a Republican, and Josh Gottheimer, who represents New Jersey's fifth district, he's a Democrat. They're the co-chairs of the Problem Solvers Caucus. We're gonna talk a little bit um, with both of them today about um, what they're working on. Thank you both for joining. Thanks for having us. Well, can we talk, and let's talk with, start with you, Congressman Gottheimer, can you just talk a little bit about the district you represent and, uh, and, and what you did before you came to Congress? Well, thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. Uh, I represent the, the most northern part of the state of New Jersey, so it's it's a it's a great district because it's got everything from farms, which I'll, I'm heading out to in a couple minutes, uh, down to Hackensack, New Jersey, which is an urban area, uh, and lots of suburbs in between. Uh, and before <coughs> I was in Congress, uh, I worked at most recently at Microsoft uh, and Ford Motor Company, uh, and and frankly ran for Congress for exactly the reason that I believe Brian did, because we were sick and tired of the screaming and the yelling and wanted to actually get things done. Um, so I'm honored to be here with uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick, who's literally right next door, uh, close by in a nearby district. And uh, it's, so thanks again for having me. Great. Uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick, a little bit about uh, where you're from. Yeah, uh, actually, Josh could have just described my district the way he described his own. You know, we have rural, we have um, uh, suburban, and we have a tad bit of urban uh, in the northern part of my district. You have uh, Naka Mixon, which is a uh, vastly open space. On the lower end of my district, you have Ben Salem, which borders the city of Philadelphia, uh, and then suburbs in between. Uh, it's a, it really is a slice of America. Uh, this district that I represent is Pennsylvania's first district, uh, which is mostly Bucks County, my home county. Um, and like Josh said, you know, Josh and I came in together in 2015 Congress. Um, I believe we both have the same. Uh, core to the, the fiber of our being on just wanting to get things done and um, believing in the art of compromise and um, knowing that with every decision we make, we're either building a bridge or driving a wedge and uh, our caucus chooses to uh, build bridges. So can, can you both talk a bit about what the caucus is really trying to achieve and how it actually works? Let me, <clears throat> Congressman Gottheimer, let's start with you. Sure. Well, for those who don't know, uh, we co-chair the Problem Solvers Caucus, which are a group of 29 Democrats and 29 Republicans in the House. Uh, we come together every single week with one objective, which is to figure out where we can agree. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but we're interested in the places where we can find, uh, we get to 75% of us agreeing about something, and we, uh, uh, we stand together and vote together and, uh, as a block. And uh, we've got a couple golden rules. One, you got to show up. Uh, two, uh, we always have to have it even between Democrats and Republicans, uh, hence 29 29. And three, we don't campaign against each other uh, or work against each other because that's how uh, we, we aim and build trust in relationships, just like you would at home uh, or in, at work. And so that we can find ways that we can actually, uh, as Brian said, work on the art of compromise. And, and when we find 75% consensus on an issue, as I said, we all stand together. So it, it's really uh, a, to me, most important thing going on in Washington right now because we're the group interested in actually getting things done, not just tweeting nasty things, but but finding solutions. I mean, Co Congressman Fitzpatrick, maybe you could just talk a little bit about what it is that you know motivated you to get so involved in this um, initially as a as a as a member of the caucus, and then of course you you recently actually became the co-chair earlier this year. Yeah, just um, as Josh said, I mean what it is that drives us to, to do this hard job. And it's, it's, it's a hard thing to run for the first time for sure. It's a hard time to, to continue to get reelected and it's a hard job to do. But um, the reason we do it is because, and I'm sure Josh gets this question all the time as I do, 
you know, people always ask us a question of things as bad as, as it seems on TV. Uh, and our caucus is why we can say no, it's not as bad as it seems on TV because uh, if they knew of our existence, which many people don't, by the way, um, and when we present to people, uh, the question that we always get is why can't there be more members in this caucus? So it's where people want us to be, it's what people are begging for. Uh, in our government. Uh, Ryan, why did I join? Uh, number one, my brother was my predecessor. He was a member. So uh, certainly I became aware of the caucus through him. But secondly, uh, I came in as an FBI agent and I uh, viewed uh, the, the key to success in my job as an investigator was surrounding the table of people from completely different backgrounds at a time we were dealing with a time sensitive crime problem because we knew that that diversity of thought would lead to the best investigative plan, would allow us to be one step ahead of that criminal. Uh, I view the problem solvers as essentially the legislative version of that. Um, viewing diversity of thought as a strength, bringing people together of different backgrounds, different mindsets, and viewing that as a strength uh, to build a better legislative package, a better solution to a problem. So that's really what motivated me. So I, you all have been in the mix, uh, right in the middle of some pretty consequential debates, beginning with uh, infrastructure. Uh, the Problem Solvers Caucus has really played a lead role in, in helping develop this bill. But there's been a lot more than that. And so, so Congressman Gottheimer, maybe you could talk about when you look back and you've been with the caucus for several years, what, what do you think are the biggest achievements the caucus has had? Well, there are a lot, so I, I can't go over all of them now, from, from, but from things like fighting to uh, get rid of the Cadillac tax uh, uh, or eliminating the medical device tax, which are, uh, or fighting to get the Women's Museum on uh, uh, the mall, things that you'd consider uh, not front page issues, but really important, um, to changing the rules of the House of Representatives to encourage more bipartisan governing uh, and to make it so that actually the members have more control over things when representing their districts versus just leadership telling you what to do. Uh, and most recently, we were in the midst of and helped negotiate uh, at the end of last year, the COVID package, which was $900 billion, which was bipartisan. We worked on with uh, in the House and the Senate Democrats and Republicans all coming together that included uh, resources for the vaccine to uh, another round of PPP for small businesses to help them. Uh, it was really historic. We worked with uh, the Trump administration, so got that signed into law at the end of December. And then, as you pointed out, most recently, we, starting in back in April, um, uh, at the governor's mansion in Maryland with Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate, sitting around the table, working on the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which passed out of the Senate in early August with 69 votes, 19 Republicans and all 50 Democrats. Uh, just gives you a sense of some of the things we've been in the middle of. Uh, and uh, it's, it's well, I'll tell you, no matter what it is, whether it's immigration or health care, uh, or things related to uh, China, um, we're in the middle of it. And, you know, I, it's, that's why I couldn't ask for a better partner than Brian, because really the way this works is us uh, listening to the members and seeing what they want to work on. And then Brian and I doing our best to try to help uh, bring, the, bring the folks together and get it done. Um, Congressman Fitzpatrick, I, I want to just ask you to talk in a little more detail um, Congressman Gottheimer just mentioned there how you were at the governor's mansion, that's Larry Hogan, he's the No Labels co-chair, in the spring to help start developing some of the ideas for this bipartisan infrastructure proposal. There were House members there, there were, there were Senate members there. I don't know that people quite appreciate how unusual that is uh, in Washington for how, how legislation might actually come together. Can you just talk a little bit about that, you know, what, what it was like being there, but, but also why that is in fact so unusual for House and Senate members to be collaborating like you have been with some of your Senate colleagues? Yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating question, Ryan, and it's to the credit of no labels that that event even occurred. Uh, and it's to the credit of no labels that we have the relationships we do uh, with our Senate colleagues. It should be the case, you're right. Why it hasn't it been in the past? Um, I would say it's, it's probably because people get so consumed within their own chamber because there's so much activity and so much going on and you're so laser-like focused on getting somebody, uh, getting a piece of legislation across the finish line in the chamber. And then once it's out, you kind of, you know, the, the normal way of thinking is it's now the chamber, the other chamber's job to get the job done and you move on to the next piece of legislation. Uh, the mindset has shifted now to build those bicameral relationships uh, with our Senate colleagues and also our colleagues in the state uh, governor's mansions. Um, and that's why I thought that that, um, that event was so significant, it was so important. And by the way, it manifested in the bipartisan infrastructure framework, which passed the Senate with 69 votes. That's the way it's supposed to work. So I think exhibit A of both what works and what doesn't work in DC, Ryan, 
is the passage of the infrastructure plan, which as you mentioned, started as an idea uh, in Governor Hoden's residence. Uh, that's what works in Congress, and that's what we were a part of. Uh, and what doesn't work in Congress is the fact that that bipartisan vote did pass, but still has not been brought up for a vote uh, because of people in leadership who are not members of the problem solving caucus. So I think um, the benefits of our caucus are on full display right now. So, Congressman, I, I, I want to uh, just both of you and, and Congressman Gottheimer, I know you've got to leave us shortly. Um, I've been looking at polls for years that show a majority of the public really does want their elected officials to work with the other party. And certainly that's true with this infrastructure bill. You, you look at the polling, how popular it is. 70% of the country wants it passed and they want it passed now. If Why is it then so hard for, to actually do it, for all of you to work together? If this is in fact what the public wants in general in regards to this specific bill, Talk about some of the factors that make that so hard. Congressman Gottheimer, maybe you can talk about that a bit. Sure, I, mean, I think Brian was just alluding to it. It's, it's in, in the case of infrastructure where we've waited 30 plus years to get a bipartisan bill, to get any bill on roads, bridges, tunnels, water infrastructure, uh, transit and trains. You know, uh, uh, this, includes, this bill includes broadband and, and uh, helping to fight climate change with more resource for climate resiliency. Right, it has so many of the things that we've been fighting for for so long, Democrats and Republicans, and wanting to come together about. Um, and as Brian said, it came out of the Senate with 69 votes, uh, passed the old-fashioned way. Democrats and Republicans working together, and obviously we worked closely together to help shape that in the House. Brian and I, with our colleagues. Um, but then, it, it, you know, what's when waiting in the House, and part of it in issue is where uh, there's another bill uh, that some of uh, my colleagues uh, want to hold up. Uh, the infrastructure bill to get passed until that one gets passed. Um, that's called reconciliation. Many things in there that I support um, and I think are important as well. I just don't believe, uh, while I support the reconciliation package, I don't believe that we should hold up any other piece of legislation for it, that these bills should be separate and considered separately. You know, but you also, listen, there's a lot of politics that come in, obviously, on our side, but also, you know, and Brian, I'm sure I'll tell you on the Republican side, right? I mean, there were I wish there had been 50 Republicans saying I'll, when we were considering voting on that bill in the House that they were eager to vote for it. But, you know, leadership over there doesn't want to give the president a win. You know, so there's like lots of there are lots of factors that come into play. Uh, and Brian working incredibly hard to bring as many people to the table to support it. So there's you know, you're, you're always I'm, I'm fighting headwinds and Brian fights headwinds and, and the, the extremes, uh, extreme voices and from the wings are loud. Uh, and uh, they have cable news and social media, and they do quite a bit of, of in my opinion, uh, uh, obstruction um, uh, and pre prevent things that are good legislation from going through because of, of their politics. And so you're always battling against that, and what Brian and I do is tough, uh, as well as the caucus, because, you know, working across the aisles and celebrated the way it should be, in my opinion, you know, we're here to govern, not to entertain. That's, we believe, our job. Uh, and we're not here to just put out tweets. We're here to pass a bill and to help people and to fight for our districts. And that should be the number one priority to put country over party. But sometimes these other forces just get in the way. Congressman Fitzpatrick, any thoughts from you just on those forces that, that you know, are always pulling you apart, even when you all are trying to bring things together? Yeah, um, the forces in politics are, are strongly on the fringes of politics. Uh, that's where the majority of money is in fundraising. That's where the majority of volunteerism is. That's where the majority of protesting is. Uh, they are the ones that get fired up. They're the people that are driven by ideological purity rather than the concept of compromise. Um, you know, psychologists can study the underpinnings of that uh, far better than I can. I can only tell you that that's the case. Um, and as Josh pointed out, Social media is largely driven by the fringes. Cable news is largely driven by the fringes. Fundraising emails are largely driven by, you know, who can come up with the most outrageous language saying the world's going to end tomorrow. Um, and that's what we're up against. You know, being a moderate, being a centrist, being a bipartisan pragmatist is not easy to do in politics today, but it should be easy because that's what the majority of people want. So it's a very complicated situation, um, Ryan, but, um, you know, we're doing what we believe is right. Uh, we, we pay a heavy price politically, you know, our, our left and right wings of grids are broken every day, um, especially in this climate that we're in right now. Uh, there's a lot of bullying that goes on. Um, it, it's, it can be challenging for sure, uh, 
but when you believe in a cause, you fight through it because you know what you're doing is right and you know that the country needs us right now. And for those people that love our country, which we all do, uh, this is what we have to be fighting for. When we're given the unique opportunity to be one of 435 voices determining the direction of the United States of America, you have to view that as a very solemn responsibility. Uh, you have to conduct yourself in a way that's becoming uh, of that high office and that high honor. And uh, as Josh said, that's being a legislator, that's not being an attorney. Uh, getting bills passed rather than constantly putting messaging out to increase one's own profile. Um, our caucus doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, it should get a lot more. Uh, and that's part of the responsibility of me and Josh is to make sure we do. Well, look, I, the, the, I want to give you both a chance just for a closing thought here. You both just talked a, a lot about a lot of the challenges you're up against. Congressman Gottheimer, let's end on a hopeful note here. Um, I mean, given the summer we've had um, and, and how, how much kind of fighting there continues to be over this infrastructure bill, over everything else, I mean, what is it that, that, that you could tell this audience um, to give them some hope that, that maybe we can find our way through this? Uh, maybe we can get this bill passed. Maybe we can pass some other things together. We Democrats. will, and we will, Ryan. And like the hopeful note is that we're actually smack in the middle of all this. That you've got reasonableness and common sense that ultimately will prevail. You know, you've got to you, you hit some bumps along the way. That's the way this, the way it is. But the fact is, here in the greatest country in the world, reason will prevail. And I believe that at my core, and I, that's why we get up every day and still fight. Uh, the good fight because we've got to get infrastructure done. We've got to get it across the finish line in a bipartisan way. And when we do, it'll be a huge accomplishment, just like the just like the significant bipartisan accomplishment of the COVID package at the end of the year was. Right? I mean, these are and look at how we handled COVID as a country. All in all, every bill but one, five of them, were all bipartisan. We came together in the middle because we had to in the middle of a huge pandemic. And look at how well our country has, you know, we're not out of the woods yet, but look how well our country has done um, given the headwinds that we faced uh, in the middle of that pandemic. And it just tells you we can come together uh, and we can do it. We just have to, people have to understand that, and, and our legislators have to understand that that's what they're there for. Um, you know, I've, I've got a, Brian faced the same thing. I'm, I'm about to uh, face a protest from the Oath Keepers. Um, and I have another protest that's apparently uh, marching down the road here uh, momentarily from the far left um, that's uh, opposing me. They're both opposing me on the same bill. Um, and so, you know, it just shows you that the wings are loud, but at the end of the day, 70% of the country stands with us about getting things done, and that's our mission, and we will. So thank you so much for having me, and I'm, I'm very grateful. Thanks, Congressman Gottheimer, uh, for joining us. And, and Congressman Fitzpatrick, just a few final thoughts from you. Yeah, um, thanks to, to No Labels for all the, for providing us with a support network that otherwise would not exist. We, we greatly appreciate it. Um, and, you know, we're going to keep doing what we're doing uh, because we believe in it and we know our country needs it. And, um, you know, it's important to remember um, a couple of things. Uh, number one, we live in a very small world uh, that's getting smaller every day. Number two, we live in a very dangerous world uh, that unfortunately is getting more dangerous every day. And third, we're a very young country. Uh, the United States of America is only 245 years old. Uh, and yet, and yet, we are the world's oldest democracy. Um, 245 years is only a few generations, and yet we are the oldest democracy on planet Earth. What should that tell us all? That democracy and freedom are very fragile concepts. And democracy and freedom can only be preserved when you conduct oneself in the way that Josh and I preach and the way Josh and I practice, the way that our caucus works. That's the only thing that preserves democracy. So it really boils down uh, to whether we're going to save our country or not. Uh, and that's why it's very personal to us. That's why we're very passionate about it. Um, and that's why we, we fight the fight that we fight every day. Um, you know, we, we get protested on both sides uh, and they're getting nastier, they're not getting nicer. Um, but that's why we do what we do, that's why we persevere, because we know, not only do we believe in what we're doing, but we know what the stakes are. The stakes are incredibly high, because we literally view our country uh, at stake right now. Well, Congressman, thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, thank you for being us. Thank, same thing with you, Congressman Gottheimer. Um, been an amazing conversation. Wish you all the best of luck here. Uh, we know you're up yeah. against so much here with the infrastructure bill. Uh, when, with, and everything else, uh, but you're fighting the good fight. 
and uh, and hopefully we will get a win here uh, for the country. So thank you all no for problem. joining us. And, uh, thanks. Thank, thank the both of you for for coming. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan.